Hello, Mike. Hello, sir. I want to see Judge Moffat. You can't see him now. He's busy. Oh, yeah? Since when has he got too busy to see reporters? That's ice you don't get out of a frigid air. Sweet old thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jim Thorpe wants to see you, Judge. You'll have to wait a minute. You better get out of here, Lou. All right, night and night, darling. Right, yeah. Uh, not that way, Miss Baker. You see, there's some men working in the corridor. Is it all right if the reporters see her? What they don't know won't hurt them. Come here, honey. Wait in here. I won't keep you just a minute. All right. Oh, hello, morning, Judge. All right, this morning. Thanks. So wait, Grogan. I got something else I want you to do. Tell the boys to come in. All right, boys. You can come in now. Hello, Mike. Hello, boys. Hello, Judge. Good morning. Well, I see you got the brownie with you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I do for you? Judge, what's all this talk about a committee of judges being formed by Judge Osgood to investigate crookedness and corruptions in the court? Well, why ask me about it? Well, everything you say, Judge, is important. I thought maybe you'd like to say something about this. Well, as a matter of fact, I would. Serene in the consciences of my own rectitude, I welcome any investigation. At the same time, I deplore the aspersions that are being cast at the judiciary. We magistrates are here to protect and to guard the common people. We must fight everything that would tend to destroy the faith these people have in our probity, our honesty, and our devotion for them. As far as this court is concerned, every record, every paper, is at the disposal of any investigating committee. Well, how's that, Jim? It's swell. If this had been at Gettysburg, I'd have thought you were Lincoln. Hold her a minute, please. All right, shake it up, boys. Would you mind uh, standing aside, please? Well, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, let her go. Thanks, Judge. I'll see you tomorrow. Just a minute. That's the wrong... I'm sorry, Judge. I, I opened the wrong door. Well, young woman, what are you doing here? Judge, Judge, save my brother. I had to speak to you, Judge, so I hid in that closet. What's your name? Lil, Lillian uh, Smith. What are you doing here? My brother's in great trouble, Judge. Great trouble. Can't you help him? I'll do all I can for you, but... as long as it's proper, but... you shouldn't do this again, hiding in my office. No, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Hey, Miss Smith. You forgot your trunk. Oh. You want some good advice? No, Judge. I get you. All right. Come on, Jim. Hello, Mike. Hi, Miss Crawford. Hello, boy. Hello, Miss Crawford. How are you? Hello, Judge. Hello, Counselor. Here's that memorandum you wanted, uh, just as you wanted it. All right, put it down. Oh, uh, Grogan. Yeah. What is that case down in, uh... All right, Counselor, that's very satisfactory. That it is. Deposit that in account B. Yes, sir. Hats off, his honor, the judge. Hello, Judge. Hello, Judge. Hello, Judge. Hello, Judge. Stand up. Major Rook, my charge is loitering on the corner of Fifth Avenue and 42nd Street. What have you got to say? Well, Judge, I... What do you know about She's it? She's an old-timer. All right, ten dollars. All right. Daisy Whitman? Come on, Daisy. 
Oh, hello, Daisy. You here again, eh? What have you got to say this time? Oh, what's the use? 30 days. John Worth. Come on, Grandpa. Haven't you been here before? Oh, yes, sir. A lot of times. <laughs> I haven't seen you lately. Where have you been hiding? I've been out of the state. Were you in jail while you were out of the state? Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What were you in for? Being drunk. Always get in jail for being drunk. <laughs> All right, ten days. Oh, thank you, Judge. <laughs> What's that? Silence. Silence. Well. Oh, Judge, Your Honor, I was walking down the street peaceable, and this officer insulted me. Said I was drinking. You're drunk now. Oh, Judge, Your Honor, I never touched a drop in my life. I'm a hard-working old woman. <laughs> you have any trouble with her? Your Honor, we always have trouble with this woman. She darn near chewed my hand off. Oh, officer, I did Ninety not... days in the workhouse. Out a boy, Judge, out a boy, out a boy, Don't you want to come back boy. here again? Come back here, is it? I didn't come here. I was bred. Take her away. And I took time to do it. Take her away. That was a little kiss. Come on. Are you, Jesse? Take her away. Come on. Are you a big step? Come on. You can't put me in jail. You a big step. I got you. Ellen Nelson. This officer says you come up to him and spoke to him on the street. How about it? Is that against the law? What did you say, officer? She asked me if I didn't want to take her out to supper. What did you say to that? I asked her what she wanted to do afterwards. She said she didn't care. Well, why should I care? Oh, get back. All right, let her come up here. Come on. What's this? Look at them, Judge. You probably never saw anything like them before. They're pawn tickets. Everything I had is gone. All right, there's no excuse for breaking the law. Well, if that isn't what is, what shall I do? Where will I go? I want to work, but I can't because there isn't any work. I want food, and when I ask for it, they think I'm trying to sell myself. Well, I will. Sure, I'll sell myself. Who wants to buy me? Ninety days. <gasps> Ninety days in a prison where they feed you and give you a bed to sleep in and a place to wash, and I'm getting it all for nothing. Next case. All right, gentlemen. Harrison, Jacobson, Kenyon. This is my case, Your Honor. Well, how about it? We picked him up driving a truckload of silk. Well, it's not against the law to drive a truckload of silk. It is if the silk ain't yours. Judge, these men are well-known crooks. Your Honor, they're nothing of the sort. They're three hard-working men. They were hired by a man they never saw before to drive the truck across town. He said he was sick. What evidence have you got against well, these no, men? Well, no, you see, Judge. Did you see him take the silk? No, sir. You got anybody here that did see him take it? No, sir. And that's all the evidence you got, eh? But, Judge, not I... here with these half-baked cases and take up the time of the court. Case is dismissed for lack of evidence. But, Judge... I don't want to hear any more about it. All right, Counselor. Your clients can go home. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, gentlemen. Next case. Jane Doe. You're accused of disorderly conduct. Using abusive language to an officer. How about it? Times, lady. Times. Good morning, Your Honor. Here's your paper, sir. All right, there you are. Good night, boss. Good night. In the morning. Thank you, sir. Paper? Morning paper. Excellent. Excellent. Morning paper, sir. Paper. 981 Park Avenue. Step on it. Hello, Charlie. Oh, come in, come in. Well, how was the party? See here, young man. What are you doing up at this time of the night? <laughs> doing just what you see. Drinking, carousing, wasting my time with charming women like you. It's time you quit fussing over those dusty old documents and got to bed. I'm having the time of my life. Yes, I read about it in the papers. 
Don't you think you've done enough for this silly old town already? Do you? Do I what? Do you think you could ever do enough for this silly old town, as you call it? Well, I don't know. How'd you get home from the party? In a taxi. Alone? Why, well, yes. Who, well, weren't you afraid? Certainly not. The streets were all lit up and there were policemen all around. <laughs> That's funny. You know, when I was a kid, there were policemen all around, too. All provided by the same silly old town, as you call it. When I was a kid, this silly old town gave me an education. Didn't cost me a thin dime. Present from the city. If I wanted to read good books, there was a free library. If I wanted to play, there were free parks, free music, free dispensaries. All provided by this silly old town, as you call it, Lizzie. Oh, I surrender. Well, you should. I think you better run along to bed now. I'm expecting some very important people soon. Nighty night. Good night. Coming here at four o'clock in the morning. What's the matter? What's it all? Has that money been there all this time? Yeah. And me with two can openers in the house. You're getting plenty. What do we do? Nothing. They won't do nothing. I'll have to stay and face it. But I want you out of here by 8 o'clock in the morning. I don't want them to put you on the witness stand, cross-examine you until I... Uh... I know. I'll go to Paris. Yeah, you will not. You go up town to a cheap neighborhood and lay low. Oh, but darling. No, I don't want to talk anymore now. Let me know when you're located. trip over the other side of the city. Collect a lot of junk, don't you? Everything but wedding rings. <laughs> Somebody lost a Hank. Somebody lost something. Give the bus a shave and a haircut. Motor okay? Oh, no, it's okay. Okay, Mike. Hey, say, that's not the way to kick it. Good morning, Miss Feldman. How's morning. the baby coming well, along? She's teasing something awful. <laughs> Why don't you try rubbing her gums with a thimble? That's what we always did. I tried bacon rind, but my husband says it ain't kosher. Oh, pardon me. Yeah? But how do I get the janitor? I've been ringing the bell, but no one answered. Oh, that bell never worked. Hey, Herman! You got a customer? Okay, Mike. Coming up. Dr. Hanksick, lady. Oh, Mike. It's a glass of beer. Oh, and also K. Okay. You bet I'll take one. <laughs> what kind of an apartment have you for rent? The swellest one in the house. Up this way, lady. I hope you like this place. Oh, it's swell. Thank you. I'll bring you up a receipt. What a dump.
tell me, whose baby are you? Tell me this instant, whose baby are you? Oh, gee, Mike, you're a lucky baby. You've got the grandest father in the world. A great, big, tall, fine man with a grin on him that'll take the heart out of any woman. Mm -hmm. And a home that's a palace. Four great big rooms. Think of it, Mike. Four rooms with a real bathtub and a gas stove. Oh, gee, Mike, we're lucky. Mm. Now, would you like me to come to call, sir? Would you like me to come to call? I think I'll come to call. Would you like a lady that looks like this? Or would you like a lady that looks like this? <laughs> How about giving this baby some attention? I think, uh, I think I'll take another nickel's worth. I'm sorry, sir, but that's all you get to get! <laughs> oh, Mike, Mike, Oh, honey, you're late this morning. Yeah. Well, you see, old man Schultz was making some beer, and he just had to have me sample. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm. Say, I brought him a swell present. A present? Yeah. Oh, Mike, isn't that just the cutest thing? Well, it's a swell coffee cup. Look, honey, this is for you. Aw, <laughs> uh -huh, that's for you. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Gee, you're sweet. You know, when I think of them dames, I gotta run around in my cab all night. And then you home here, so sweet and clean. Whew. Old man Schultz's beer must have been pretty strong. Oh, is that so? Mm. What did he look like? Oh, very handsome, with big blue eyes and curly hair. He'll have black eyes when I get to him. What did he do? Well, we got kind of familiar. Did he kiss you? No, he bit me. Well, I'll kill him, that's what I'll do, I'll kill him. You'll do nothing of the kind, you won't even touch him. How do you want to die? Oh, Mike, you jealous thing. Don't you know I couldn't love anybody but you? Oh, how are you? Hello, Dad. Come in, come in. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Thomas Madigan. Been doing a little private investigating for me. I do. Well, Madigan, what about it? This Judge Moffat is a pretty gay bird. He's keeping a girl by the name of Lil Baker in a Park Avenue apartment. Uh, she's got her own auto and everything. Now, you gents know what that calls. Hey, well, our experience is limited along that line, Madigan. I want this woman watched all the time. I'll take care of that myself, sir. <laughs> That's all, Madigan. Thank you. Good night, gentlemen. Good, Good night. night. Good night. And this gentleman is just the beginning. As soon as our public sessions begin, I'm going to drag Moffat out into the open. I'll go through his bank accounts. I'll find out how much money he's got and where he's got it. Well, where does he bank? Up to now, we don't know. He's got a small checking account in one bank. Doesn't amount to anything. That's what I want that woman for, this little baker that Madigan spoke about. Maybe she'll help us. Aren't we laying too much stress on Moffat and his court? No, we're not. You can't overemphasize the possibilities of evil in the lower courts. If it wasn't for the connivance of the magistrates in these night courts, this corruption could not exist. Practically all criminals, as soon as they are apprehended, are brought to these courts. The unfortunate woman of the streets, she's preyed upon with a bail bond broker, who in turn pays tribute to the ward healer. Bootleggers pay for protection with the same evil influences. And from there, the corruption spreads in all directions. And that's just what we've got to fight. You don't cut off a tree at the top. You cut it off at the root. 
and Moffat is the root. So, gentlemen, with your help, we'll put these crooks where they belong. And by the grace of God, we'll turn this city into a clean city for clean Americans. Yeah, calling me up and saying it's urgent, important. And when I come up here, what do I find? Yeah, you don't like the place. It's a dump. The hot water doesn't work. It smells of onions. And there's a little baby next door that cries and hurts your ears. Oh, boy. That wasn't the real reason. No? Well, what was it? I was lonesome. Wait a minute. There's a house across the street with windows, too. Now come here, quick. There's a man watching this place from across the street. It's Madigan. He's a private dick. Ten to one, he's after us. See what you've done? Played right into Wasgood's hands. You suppose he really followed you here? No, no. He sat in a dark room and looked in the crystal and saw me coming here. Thing for you to do is to get out right away. Move. Find another place. Take your pardon. Oh, that's all right. You kid, Andy. How old is he? About a year? Oh, no, he's barely nine months. Let me help you up with him. Thank you. Oh, pretty heavy. Huh? Pretty heavy. He's a big boy for his size. I should say. Well, now turn around and easy for you. Oh, all right. There you are. Do you live here? Yes. Well, maybe you can save me a trip in then. I'm looking for an apartment. Is there anything in here for rent? Well, that apartment up there next door to ours was vacant until this morning when a lady moved in. She was pointing right up here. Do you know who she is? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Thank you. Goodbye. What could he talk to her about? What could he tell her about you? She lives next door. She couldn't tell him anything. She's never even seen me. It's a sense they got something on us one way or the other. Wait a minute. You, uh... You better go in there and talk to her. See if you can find out what he's after. Oh, what's the use? There's nothing she can tell him. She doesn't know anything. Say, you don't realize what a jam we're in. There she is now. Go on in and talk to her. I'll wait till you come back. Hurry up. Now you stay right there. I'm sorry to bother you. I live in the apartment next door, and may I come in a moment? Why, yes, certainly. My husband's asleep. He works nights. Won't you sit down? Oh, isn't he a darling? Well, of course, I think so. I'm his mother. I know I'm a perfect stranger to you. But I'm in so much trouble, I just don't know who to turn to. A man just spoke to you down the street, didn't he? Yes, the man I ran into with the baby buggy. So that's how it is. Did he ask you any questions about me? Well, not exactly. He asked me if anybody moved in lately, and I told him, yes, the lady had. That was you. Is that all you told him? That's all he asked me. Oh, it's dreadful to be hunted like a criminal. Just because I want to break away and be decent. That man who spoke to you is a detective. A detective? Can I trust you? Why, yes, of course. I'm sure you'll understand. For a long time, I've been trying to... to break away from a man. But he always hunts me and persecutes me until I give in and go back. But this time I won't. I killed myself first. <laughs> oh, don't cry. Oh, please don't cry. All all I wanted is a chance to start over again. Please help me. Please don't tell him anything about me. Of course I won't. Now, don't you worry another minute. I won't tell anybody anything. Oh, I knew that was the right thing to come to you. Goodbye. You've got the best mother in the world. Well, now, now, don't you worry another minute. Don't worry about me anyway. I won't tell anybody. Not a soul. 
Goodbye. Well, what happened? It was a knockout. I wish you could have seen it when I cried. When you what? I tell you, I was like a pump. I cried all over the place. I told all about the man who had ruined my life and how I wanted to be a good woman. Did she believe that? <laughs> She'll probably smack him in the eye the next time she sees him. Well, go on, what else happened? Oh, Mike, you little devil, what have you done? $60,000. Oh, my heavens, what'll I do? Oh, she'll think I've done it on purpose. I wouldn't have opened it for the world. Well, I hope you got away with it. Andrew, I cried like a baby. What's the matter? I've lost it. It's gone. What are you talking about? It's gone. I've lost it. What's gone? What are you talking about? Talk sense. What's the matter? When you burned those papers at my apartment last night, you forgot your bank book. And I put it in an envelope with your name on it, and I was going to give it to you and forgot it. And it was here in this bag. Oh, I beg your pardon, but I lost... Oh, there it is. You found yes, it. Yes, it must have dropped out of your pocketbook. I found it in the baby's crib. Oh, that's all right. It was awfully careless of me. It wasn't anything important to anyone but myself. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you so much. Oh, that's all right. I'm glad nothing happened to it. So am I. Well, there it is, all okay. And listen, you're moving tomorrow. I'll send Grogan up with some keys for another apartment. In the meantime, you see Madigan lay low. Well, for heaven's sakes, get me a place without a tin bathtub, will you? Hey, come here. Look at this. What's the matter? This thing's been resealed. She's opened it. But she couldn't have. You no, know, it's still wet. Feel for yourself. Suppose Maddie can put her up to this? Do you think so? And listen, if she's seen that bank book and knows where my money is and tells that to Maddie, and that's my finish. They'll send me up the river. We're all done for her. What'll we do? Andrew, what are you going Wait to do about it? Wait a minute. Listen, don't you leave this place tonight. Keep that door open and watch that girl. If she goes out, follow her. Madigan tries to come up and see her, stop it. I don't care how you do it, but don't let them get together. He'll report to Osgood in the morning, and then he'll come back up here tomorrow. All right, I'll do that. But what are you going to do? I'm going to take very good care of myself and my future. Listen. Now, let's see. What would you like for supper? Hmm? You don't know, huh? Well, now, let's see. How would you like some cream of tomato soup and a beef steak with onions and some French fried potatoes and a cucumber salad? Have you got that clearly now? But aren't you afraid? Is it safe? It's got to be safe. He's still there. I thought you said he'd be out there in time to catch the theater crowd. Well, can I help it if he's late? Say, you know, I got half a mind to take the evening off and go to the movies with you. But I couldn't get anybody to stay with the baby. No, that's right. Is he asleep? Yes, and don't you wake him up, either. She's going to be a big kid, is he? Big, why, do you know that downstairs today a man thought he was a year old? No. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Excuse me. Is there a drugstore anywhere near here? Yes, right on the corner, Horses Place. Thanks. I'm going down to get some magazines and a soda. I wonder if you'd mind walking down with me. I'm kind of nervous after seeing that detective. Well, I'd be glad to, only I can't stay very long on account of the baby. That's awfully kind of you. I suppose 
You think I'm silly to be frightened. Indeed I don't. I feel the same way. I'll get my hat and be right out. I can't help it to be so absurd, but it's just that way, you know. Well, I don't think it's absurd at all. It's awfully kind of you. I'm kind of lonely down here. Let's do it often. I'd like to. Well, good night. Thanks again. Don't mention it. Good night. Good night. I want to give you another cent. You dirty tramp. I'll not give you another cent. Understand that a nickel? You understand? You're not going to give me out one more nickel. Not one cent. brought me up here, and now she's yelling your head off because I wouldn't give her another 20. Hey, there's Wait. a big fight going on up there. You better go and look into it. Yeah, where? That first flat up there. All right, Tommy. See you later. All right. Are you sure this young lady asked you to come up to What are room? they saying? I can't hear. They found a man undressed in her room. What? A man undressed in her room. Undressed? But it's a warm night. She picked you up on the street? Oh, I didn't do anything of the kind. I don't know how he got here. Oh, it's the old keep your nose out of this or I'll tan the hide out for you. It's women like you that turn decent girls into tramps. For two pins, I will. What's the trouble here? What's oh, the row? Oh, it ain't nothing. Just a row. Now, if you want to fight with your husband, do it quiet. Do it quiet. He's not my husband. I never saw him before in all my life. Now, what's he doing up here? I don't know. I tell you, I don't know. What are you doing up in this room? What do you think? She brought me up here. Oh, one of them. Sure. Well, what about it? I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything at all about it. I found him here just like that. She's lying. She's lying, policeman. I've seen her pick up a man this afternoon on the street. Oh, I tell you, I've never seen the man before in all my life. A stranger to you, huh? Oh, yes, yes. What's he doing up here without any clothes on? And what about you? Well, I was just getting ready for bed, and all of a sudden I looked up, and there he was, just like that. Yeah, now what's your story? She spoke to me on the street, and I came up here with her. Then she tried to hold me up for an extra 20. Oh, well, that's not true. I was willing to be reasonable, but like $20. <laughs> and then when I wouldn't come through, she lets out a yell and says I'm a burglar. Uh, put you up on the street, eh? Huh? Sure. <laughs> Are you busy? 
Uh, no, uh, where to, lady? Yes, Central Station. It may give them a half an hour. Oh, sure. You know, look, it, you certainly had me fool, lady. Come on, get your hat and coat on. Get out of here. You too. But why? What is it? What's happening? You're under arrest. Oh, but I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. He's lying. I can't help it, lady. Tell that to the judge. Come on, folks. Get out of here. Oh, please don't let him take me away. Please hey, don't. You I too. Come on. Anything. Come on. Oh, Everybody outside, let the lady dress here. But I can't go. I can't leave my baby. That's all right. Please. I'll take care of the baby for you. Come on. Get dressed. I can't hang around here all day. Outside, folks. Come on. I'll move on. Please, let the lady get dressed. No, honey. Come on. Move on. All right. Don't worry. <laughs> Come out all right. <laughs> the defendant did then accost said complainant and by conjolvents and with promises induce him to accompany her to her rooms. And while there did attempt to extort money from him and failing to do that created a disturbance and loud noise against the peace and dignity of the people of the state. That's true, isn't it? Sure. Matron. Bring that young girl here. Your name is Mary Thomas, and you live at 981 West 67th Street, that is right? Your occupation? Taking care of my baby. A housewife, eh? The complainant here? Yeah. Well, bring him up. Thank you. Up You say this girl induced you to come to her home and then tried to get you to give her money, and then when you refused to do so, she said you was a burglar? Yes, sir. That's right. Oh, no. You solemnly swear the evidence you're giving in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, so help you God? I do. That's all. <gasps> okay, Henry? Sure, Your Honor. Hats off. His Honor, the judge. Ah, uh, hello, Mike. You're taking out a few pounds. Yes, three meals a day. Good evening, Your Honor. I mean, how's the new baby? Oh, he's fine. Thank, Thank you, Judge. The new baby. I didn't know that. Yeah, cutest kid you ever saw in your life. Case of the people against Conrad Goodstead. Case adjourned by mutual consent. <clears throat> Martha Johnson? Hi, Martha. Used of picking pockets. How about it? I ain't got nothing to say, George. Special sessions. Jenny Hayden. Jenny Hayden. You're accused of loitering on the street corners. How about it? My client pleads guilty, Your Honor. Five dollars. You got any money? Yes, Your Honor. Right. Come over here to the bail. Mary Thomas. Right. Come on, up here, up here. Well, young woman, what have you got to say for yourself? Judge, I don't know what this means. I don't know what's happened. Have you got a lawyer? No, sir. Have you enough money to employ one? But I don't need a lawyer. I haven't done anything. This court is here for the protection of the poor people. I will appoint a lawyer to represent you. Mr. Crawford. Uh, yes, Your Honor. You take this case, see what you can do for this young woman? Oh, uh, yes, certainly, Your Honor. I've appointed one of our best lawyers to take uh, care of your case. Step right over here. <laughs> Next case. Ms. May Higgins. May Higgins. Now, now, my dear, there's nothing to be frightened about. These things happen all the time. But I can't understand it. I tell you I haven't done anything. Well, perhaps you haven't. Perhaps it's all a mistake. But wouldn't you rather pay a small fine and go home to your... Well, you've got a husband, haven't you? Oh, yes, of course. Well, I'll plead guilty then. But I'm not guilty. Of course you're not. I know that. But if you say you're not guilty, it means a trial and you'll have to stay in prison here. Oh. But if you plead guilty, it's just a question of $5 fine and out you go. So you see, there's nothing to be frightened about. And do you really think I should? That's the best thing to do and you'll be out of here in 10 minutes. I didn't know we were annoying anyone, Your Honor. And don't let it happen again. Next time you want to have a fight with your boyfriend, hire a hall. Case dismissed. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, my client wishes to plead guilty and throw herself on the clemency of the court. Uh, may I suggest a small fine? I do not regard this as a case where a fine would be adequate. These cases of women extorting money from men must be stopped. Six months in the county workhouse. Your Honor. Oh, oh Judge! Judge, please don't do that to me! Don't take me away! Oh, don't let me take you to Next prison! Case. Please! Please don't take me away! Oh. Your Honor. 
Honor, I ask for a continuance of the case of Mary Hogan on account of illness. Granted. Thank you. Hi, Herman. See, it's a great day, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Have a good night. Swell, swell. And maybe I ain't ready for the hay. Did you tell him? No, I, I just couldn't. I didn't have the heart. Well, somebody's got to tell him. Where's your mom? She's still sleeping? <coughs> Here, don't you make any noise. You wake her, you big brute. Why, you, I bet you kept your mother awake all night, you little devil. You know, I have a good mind to punch you smack in the nose. Yes, I am. I'm not scared of you. No. <laughs> Come on, we'll get our own breakfast. will be here in a few moments to take you away. Oh, I'm not going. My husband will be here any minute now. The minute he finds out, he'll come down and get me out. <laughs> hey. Hey, what is this? What time is it? Here are you. Why, look at you. Yeah. Oh, come on. You want to wake your mom? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. A couple of gents come say good morning. Hey, kid, come on out. What do you think this is, April Fool? leave any message with you? No, no, she didn't. That's funny. She didn't leave any message for me, either. Did you see her when she went out, Herman? No, 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 I didn't. Ain't she home, Mr. Thomas? If she was home, I wouldn't be asking when she went out, would I? <laughs> what? What are you all looking so funny for? What's happened? Why, nothing very much, Mike. But what are you keeping back from me? Was my wife taken sick or something? Oh, no, nothing like that. No, she's all right. She did have to go out for a little while, but I guess she'll be right back. Quit stalling, Herman. What's happened to my wife? What's happened to Mary? The cops took her, Mike. What? The cops took her. Herman, I told you not to drink any more of that bathtub gin. You ain't so funny, you know. Oh, I ain't been drinking. The cop came into the room and took him because, uh, well, you've got to get it, Mike. Because there was a man in the room and they were both undressed and... Don't hit me, Mike, please. Quit lying about her. Oh, you're, you're just kidding, ain't you? You and, you and Mary put up kind of a job on me to kind of scare me. It's all right, fella. The joke's on me. That's it, ain't it? No, it ain't. I seen them both. And they was pretty near naked. She picked him up on the street and took her to a flat in this building here, where me and my little girl lives. She disgraced us all. Nobody ain't disgraced. Nobody. Get that? I know what I seen. Mary ain't that kind of a girl. <laughs> Herman, what happened? 
Tell me, don't you see? I gotta find out. Don't you see? I gotta find out. Well, Mike, I don't know much about it. The defendant did then accost said complainant at Biker Jones and with promises did persuade him to accompany her to her rooms. And while there did attempt to extort money from him <coughs> and failing to do that, created a disturbance and loud noise against the peace and dignity of the people of this state. And my wife said that was true? Yes. Well, she must have gone cuckoo. But it's all right, fella. We'll find out about it. Your Honor, my wife knocked it off the stand and broke it. That's when you hit her, eh? Just a minute, just a minute. What's the yeah, thing? Listen, I gotta see what the judge. It's very important. Wait a minute. What is it? He said he's gotta see you. You have to sit down and wait. Oh, sit down and take a seat. Wait a minute. You promise you won't beat your wife anymore? Yeah, yes, sir. All right, case dismissed. Thank you, Your Honor. Next case. Just a minute, just a minute. Judge, won't you please listen to me? It's awful important. All right, what is it? Whose case is that? Judge, Your Honor. Just a minute, I'll have to hear this Come case on, first. Come on, sit down over here. Wait a minute. All Come right, on. bring that old lady over here. What's the charge? Laundering. What, this old lady? Sure, she was hanging around in front of a restaurant window looking at the food and crying. I didn't know it was against the law to look at food. She had a big crowd around her, and she was obstructing traffic. Laundering and obstructing traffic is a charge, Your Honor. My good woman, when did you eat last? I... I had a cup of coffee yesterday morning. And they call this a civilized country. These cases are becoming too numerous. They are reflections on the decent feelings of a city. Here, my good woman. Take this money. Come to my office tomorrow. I'll see what can be done about you. The case is dismissed. Thank you. See that she gets what she wants. Yes, Your Honor. Come along, very well. Where are the reporters? Those guys are never wrong when a good story breaks. <laughs> I told you to wait, didn't I? Judge, I can't. I can't. I'm going crazy. I don't know what happened to my wife. What's your wife's name? Mary Thomas. Here's the case, Your Honor. Oh, yes. Yeah, I remember now. Well, what about it? I read the papers, Judge. I don't know what it means at all. What happened, anyhow? She was arrested for speaking to a man on the street. And taking him up to her room. Quarreling with him because he wouldn't give her $20. Cockeyed lie. Hey, hey, behave yourself or you'll be thrown out all of right, here. All right, all right, leave him alone. He's got trouble enough. I sentenced her to six months in the workhouse because she pleaded guilty. There have been too many cases lately of women extorting money from men. Judge, she couldn't have done it. I'm married to her. I know what kind of a girl she is. Mr. Crawford, will you come up here, please? Yes, Your Honor. This is the husband of the woman you defended last night, the Thomas woman. Oh, yes, yes, Your Honor. Will you kindly tell him what you know about the thing? Well, yes, I defended your wife. Uh, I did everything I could to get her off, but she pleaded guilty. A lot of witnesses against her. She said it was true. I couldn't do anything against that. Mary said that she took a man to her room. Why, nothing in the world would make me believe that. Nothing. I'm sorry. You know more about that than I do. Judge, what do I do now? How can I get her out? Nothing can be done. She must serve her sentence. Next case. Uh, Just a minute. Come back here. How do you earn your living? I got my own cab. I drive for a living. Have you got anybody to take care of the baby? I'll take care of him. I think, Judge, you'd better commit the child to us. His mother is on the island. The father's a taxi driver. He'll be better off with us. Nobody's going to take my baby. You're in no position to take care of him. All right, Mr. Davis. I commit the child to your care. You will like it. You stop that man. Bring him back. I'm sending the child to a society where he'll have care. After your wife gets out of prison, she proves to me that she's leading the proper kind of life. You come back here, and I'll return the child to you. You can't have him. It's my baby. Take your hands off that kid. You sent my wife up, now you're trying to take my kid away from me. I'm taking the child away from you for the child's good. I'm putting it in the hands of people who are eager and willing to take care of it. To have better food, better care, and cleaner surroundings than you can give it. When you are ready and able to take care of it, you come to me, and I'll give him back to you. That's fair enough, isn't it? Judge, I, I didn't look at it that way. Sure, it's fair. Only it don't leave me much, does it? Four empty rooms and gas stove. Next case.
What happened? They sent her up for six months. Got anything to drink? I thought maybe you'd be needing it. Here, wait till I get a glass. What for? <coughs> they took the baby, too. Said I wouldn't be able to take care of it. Well, how could you? Well, maybe I couldn't. It don't matter anyhow. I can't understand it. I, I just can't get it. Mike, what's the good of being a sucker all your life? Well, I'd rather take a punch in the nose and tell you this. I came into this room ahead of the cops. When she didn't have nothing on her hardly, just her pants and stockings and some sort of a shirt or something, I don't know. Who? Mary? Sure, that's who I'm talking about. And the fellow, he was only half-dressed. What did he look like? What kind of a guy was he? Oh, I don't know. He was a gentleman, all right. He, he wore them patent leather shoes and everything. If I could just get my hands on him. I'd give her a good home. I was goofy over her. What made her do it? Mike, nobody knows what makes them do it. Why, I've had three wives and there wasn't one of them worth a hoot. I know, but with a swell home and a baby, acting like a dirty... Mike, why don't you take a drink? Oh, it ain't got any bite to it. I don't feel it. Why don't you lie down and take a good sleep, Mike? Yeah, I guess I will. Sure. I guess that's what I need. Sure. So long. So long, Herman. Well, what do you want? Well, I, I expected to see your wife. Yeah? Well, she left a message for you. Wait a minute. Let him alone. What do you want? Do you know who you hit? I don't care who he is. You want to get pinched? A detect? Well, sorry. You better clear out of here before he comes to. Come on, I'm moving uptown. You can take me. Hurry. Uh, I did. Come on, here's my bag. Come on. He's coming, too. Come on! Hurry! Bring them right in here, in this room. Right over there. How much do I owe you? Huh? Oh, no, that's all right. You don't owe me nothing. If that hadn't been for you, I guess I'd have gotten a lot of trouble up at the house with that dick. We'll call it square. Oh, wait a minute. You better not go back up there yet. He may be hanging around. Yeah, I guess you're right. Come on, sit down. You look like you're all in. Take a drink now and then? No, I, I never had much. I guess there's no reason why I shouldn't, no. Oh, wait a minute. I'll get some glasses. There we are. Oh, I forgot the ginger ale. That's all right. I can take it straight. Not me. I like ginger ale. Well, say, you better take a stiff one. You look like you need it. I'm awfully sorry about what happened. About your wife getting... Uh... That's all right. I think it's a dirty shame. A girl that had everything. Yeah, yeah, well, forget it. I have. What do I care? Well, at that, it's her side of it, you know. She's young, and you're out working late at night. Yeah? And for what? To keep her in a swell flat. And she goes and turns it into a... Oh, I forgot. I have to use the phone. Help yourself. You might fix me a weak one. Okay. He knocked him down. That dick, Madigan. <laughs> Why, Madigan will tell him, and then... No, he won't, because I rushed him right out into his taxi with my bags. 
I've got him here. Drowning his sorrows in some of that bad liquor you sent me. <laughs> okay, I'll tell him just as soon as he gets home from court. But you keep the kid there until you hear from me. Okay. Goodbye. You didn't put all that in my glass, I hope. No, I had some straight. What are you doing? Oh, but she's a bad one inside, all right. What? Butter wouldn't melt in your mouth. You're so innocent, huh? Your name isn't Mary by any chance, is it? But it is. It always is with you innocent-looking dames. Yeah. That's more like it. Ah, oh, that's so people know my wife for what she really is after this. She certainly played you a dirty trick, all right. Shut up. I'll do all the talking about her. There isn't going to be any. Not anymore, there isn't. Out of my life, you little tramp. Oh, don't get tight. I'm going to get so tight. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to stay sober so you and I can have a lot of fun. What do you say? Shall we? Sure. Let's have some fun. She can, I guess I can, too. How about it? Watch this, Mrs. Thomas. What do you keep thinking about her for? I'm not a... I'll show her. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> oh, you're strong. Wait a minute, darling. I'll go put on something more comfortable. Yeah. Sure, put on something. More. Uh. Out like a light. court stands for honesty and decency, for the protection of the poor people, and the administration of justice. That's great, Will. There's enough evidence there to convict Moffat a hundred times over. I'm not going to use it to convict him. Not going to use it? I didn't say I wasn't going to use it. I said I wasn't going to use it to convict Moffat. Well, well what do you mean? I'm going to offer Moffat immunity, if he turns state's evidence. After all, Moffat is only a crooked branch on a diseased tree. You mean this corruption isn't confined to Moffat's court? No. It's everywhere, but not in any other court, thank heaven. I'm positive of that. This city is an amazing network of corruption, which we must eradicate before it overcomes honesty and decency. And if we can do that, Jim, we can call it a day. You're a great guy, you are. A flashy dame gives you an eye, and you, you're off in a cloud of dust. Drinking. Kissing. It's a lucky thing I passed out when I did. Gee. I wonder what turned her bad. 
I can't get it. I, I can't get it. She was a good girl when she come to me. Gee, she was funny at first. Kind of shy and scared. And, and she didn't want me to know. And I said, kid, if you're scared of... Oh, I just can't believe it. She couldn't have done it. Then why did she have to say she'd done it? She didn't have to do that. And all the time the baby was coming. She was always laughing and joking. Everything. She couldn't have been lying to me all that time. Then why was she in this room all undressed with a man? Swore. She swore it was true. She swore it on a Bible. It must have been true. She couldn't have done it. She couldn't have done it. I don't care if she swore on a stack of Bibles a mile high. I don't believe she did it. And then they brought me here. Jesus, it, it looks like a monkey house. But when I seen you come in the cage there, it made me so sick to my stomach, I... I nearly threw up my wife in a monkey house. It's been awful for you, Mike. I nearly went screwy. They took everything from me, first you and the kid. They took my baby. Who took him? Who's looking after him? Listen, honey, he's all right. The, the society's looking after him. You mean an orphanage? You mean my baby's in an institution? Well, he's all right. Honest, he is, kid. They wouldn't let me keep him on account of your being in... Well, uh, on account of your being away, but he's all right. Say, I'll bet he's having a swell time. Oh, no, he ain't. He cries for me at night. I can hear him. When I'm asleep, I can hear him. Oh, Mike, when are you going to bring me home? Honey, what did you say you did it for? And the lawyer told me to. Mike, you sure he's warm at night? Sure. What lawyer told you to? The one the judge got me. What did he tell you to plead guilty for? He told me if I did, they'd only find me five dollars and I could go home. And, Mike, did you tell him that if he's not wrapped right, his little hands get awful cold? Listen, Mary, forget the baby for just a minute. I've got to find out what happened. Now tell me. But my baby, honey. Ain't he my baby, too, and ain't I trying to get you back to him? How did that guy get into your room? I don't know. I went down to the drugstore, and when I got back, I started to get undressed. And all of a sudden, there he was in my room. And I screamed, and they called a cop, and I only had my underclothes on. Hiding and looking at you while you took your clothes off. If I ever get my hands on him, I'll push his dirty eyes right through the back of his head. What did you go to the drugstore for? The woman next door asked me if I wanted a soda. You mean, you mean that blonde dame? Yes, Mrs. Moffat. Moffat? Her name ain't Moffat. Yes, it is, honey. Moffat, what? Oh, I know that. Well, that's the judge that sent you up. You got a mixed baby. No, I haven't. That was the name that was on the bank book. What bank book? And the one she left to my apartment, and the baby tore the envelope, and I pasted it up. And, oh, Mike, I couldn't help seeing it, really. It had had $60,000 in it. $60,000? And the name was Moffat? And, and that blonde name, Hannah? Listen, baby, 
I gotta be going. I got a lot of ideas. Oh, but I can't stand it here. I can't eat and I can't sleep. Oh, Mike, isn't there anything else I can do? Sure there is. Say your prayers, kid. Say your prayers. Get down on your knees and say, God, I ain't done anything wrong. And I'm as sweet and clean as the day I was born. And I got a husband who's a big palooka. But he loves me. And help him to get me out of here and find a dirty skunk that put me here. For thy sake, amen. Oh, Mike. And that's a whole layout. I know it sounds crazy, but there must be some connection between Judge Moffat and that dame. It sounds incredible, unbelievable. If your suspicions are correct, it's the most outrageous thing I ever heard of. I'm going to help you to get to the bottom of this, my boy. Oh, gee, thanks. They told me you were a square guy. And I can promise you one thing. That if I put my hands to this, I'll stay with it to the end. We'll get Moffat. Well, uh, I just want to get my wife out. Of course, you understand that what your wife told you is good circumstantial evidence, but not legal proof, and that's what we must get. Wait here a minute. I'll talk this matter over with my partner. Two heads are better than one, you know. Sit down, sir. Sit down. I'll be back in a moment. Judge Moffat, please. This is Thomas Haskins speaking. It's very important. It's Haskins, Judge. He says it's very important. And this is Moffat. Yes, I tell you, he's on the whole thing. He's right here in my office now. We've got to work pretty fast. That crazy kid will put over something that will... I'll tell him to go up there and get some proof. I'll, I'll take care of the boy from that point on. That's right. Logan, I, I want you to get me a couple of bad boys. Okay. Very bad. Now, this is the way we've figured it out. This woman, Lil Baker, is important. You go back to her apartment. See if you can get an admission out of her. Maybe she'll talk. I don't know. She's pretty smart. All right, then. You be smarter. Flatter her. Say nice things about her. Anything to make her talk. Just take it easy, buddy. Nobody will get hurt. Walk towards the cab. Guy, you got the wrong idea about a pal of ours. We want you to know that. What are you talking about? You've been going around shooting off your mouth about Judge Moffat. He's a swell guy. And you got him wrong, see? Have a little paper saying you ain't got no complaint against the judge. That everything you said was wrong and you knew all the time your wife was picking up guys on the street. What, you dirty... Wait a minute, guy. Let him up. Now, do you feel like doing what you're told? Wouldn't make any difference if I signed it anyway. I wouldn't stick to you it. You would, you would.
Sit down, Moffat. Thanks, I'll stand if you don't mind. Have a cigar? No, I don't want anything from you. Well, I suppose you're wondering why I sent for you. Yes. Moffat, how would you like to take immunity? You tell me what you know about the crooks in this town and I'll call off my case against you. <laughs> no, we're all alone here, Moffat. Well, no harm making sure. You haven't got any case against me, Osgood. You haven't got any evidence. You haven't got anything and you know it. No. No evidence, eh? All you have is bluff. All you do is keep on being interviewed, make threats. I'm not threatening you now. I'm giving you your last chance for freedom. You make a clean breast of everything or I'm going to put you in jail. Why, you're talking like a windbag. I'm not afraid of you. This is your last chance to save yourself. You save yourself. I'm warning you. Drop this. You think I'm going to let you railroad me to make political capital for yourself? It'd be pretty sweet for you, wouldn't it, to use me as a stepping stone? I'd break your neck if you try to make a patsy out of me. Calm yourself, Moffat. Yeah, I got a mind to smash your head with this thing right now. Nobody'd know about it. We're all alone. You better take care, Moffat. You take care of yourself, you meddling old fool. Well, I had hoped you might see this thing my way, but as long as you don't, no need discussing it any further. You attend to your business, and I'll attend to mine. Yeah? Yeah, Osgood? Sure I know where he lives. Yeah? Okay, I understand. There you are, Grogan. Good. This is what we came for. Shut that tape and come on. I just opened it. Let me open this. I'll bet he's got coin in there. We got what we came for. Shut the safe and come on. But maybe there's dough in there. Never mind the dough. Come on. Uh, All right, now. All right, me again, I can't stand it. Well, you had enough? Let me down. I can't stand it. You gonna do what we say? I'll do anything. Only let me down. I can't stand it. All right, let him down. All right, get up. So you decided to take a nice long trip on a boat, eh? Maybe three months. It's all right, son. The salt air will do you good. And listen, fella. Just remember this while you're on that trip. If you ever decide to come back here, what you just got ain't nothing. You'll think it was a massage. Give me a cigarette, man. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Osgood's racket is certainly... Bust. Well, I can't tell you how grateful I am to you, Grogan. Oh, nonsense, Judge. That ain't nothing to what you've done for me. Uh, oh, yeah? That's me. Okay, I'll tell him. A friend of mine just called me up to say that a friend of yours left for South America tonight. Well, I hope he has a nice trip. Yeah. Nice long trip. Ah, good night, Jordan. Good night, Judge. Hey, Bert. Morning, Good morning, good morning Your Jimmy. How are you this morning? I'm just fine. Thank you, sir. Hey, Bert. Morning, paper. Hey. Paper, sir. Wake up. Park hey, Avenue and 59th Street. What's the idea? I didn't tell you to come here.
Judge, your friends beat me up. They asked me a lot of questions. They asked me, uh, would I sign a paper? And they asked me, would I take a trip to South America? But there's one thing they forgot to ask me. Could I swim? Moffat, what have you done with my wife? Yeah, I know, you can't talk, but you're going to. You framed her, didn't you? Maybe you don't know the girl I mean, huh? You remember the time I came to your court and talked to you? Yeah, that's better. Now then, you framed her, didn't you? Oh, you don't want to answer, huh? Remember where it says in the Bible, do unto others? <laughs> You yellow skunk, turn your other cheek. You framed her, didn't you? I'm gonna do that to you every ten minutes all night long till you tell me. Gee, my hand's getting sore. Come on, Judge, tell the truth and I'll let you go. Well, I can stand it just as long as you can. You wouldn't have a cigarette. Don't do anything rash while I'm gone, fella. What you gotta do is think things over. Just think things over. against this man for assault with a deadly weapon. Assault with intent to kill. Kidnapping. See, I did. I got a warrant for your arrest for murder. Murder? Murder? Who's murder? Margaret? You're accused of the murder of Judge William Osgood. Well, you're crazy. I saw Osgood only... Well, is, is Osgood dead? Yes. You're accusing me of the murder? Yes. And I needn't caution you that everything you say will be taken down in writing. And to be used against you? Mm, you're telling me the law. And the reporter's here? Yes, yes, right here. Judge Erskine has cautioned me not to talk, but this is the time I will talk. I've been accused of almost every crime it's possible to imagine, and no one has brought forward one single iota of evidence. My enemies are attacking me in this unwarranted, outrageous fashion. They're accusing me of murder. You got that down? Yes, sir. All right. I'm standing facing these charges calmly and fearlessly. But I tell you, gentlemen, this is going to be the end of this sort of thing. I demand an immediate hearing on these idiotic charges. If it please, Your Honor, the district attorney is not ready at this time. I would suggest that the matter be let go over for the grand jury. Now, you see, boys, it's the same old story. We're not ready. We haven't got the evidence. We have no proofs. <laughs> and yet they point at me and yell murder. Erskine, am I under arrest? Yes. 
And as a prisoner under arrest, charged with murder, standing on my rights as an American citizen, I demand a hearing now. But, Your Honor, I'm helpless. I know nothing about the case. Get in touch with your office. Ask the district attorney if he can be here in 15 minutes. Yes, sir. And, Moffat, you will remain in custody in court until that time. It's all right with me. And keep him here, too. They're going to try you for murder in 15 minutes. You couldn't get me out of here with a truck. Thanks. Want to put him on? No, sit down. Now, don't ask me again. I told you I didn't. Ask the district attorney. Yes, Good morning, Judge. Sorry to get you here in such a rush. Well, what is the hurry? Moffat demands an immediate hearing. Will you come up here, Moffat? Do you want an attorney to represent you? Yeah, not in a case as flimsy as this, no. Your Honor, why go into the hearing at this time? I demand an immediate hearing. And you're going to get it. Andrew J. Moffat, you're accused of the murder of Judge William Osgood. What have you to say? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. I haven't seen Osgood in weeks. Well, Mr. Grant? You say that you haven't seen Osgood in weeks. Your Honor, we will establish the fact that last night Moffat went to Osgood's house, that the men quarreled, and that Moffat, in a fit of rage, beat him to death with this ivory and ebony ruler. That, in brief, is our case. And I ask that this man be held for the action of the grand jury. This district attorney says I went to Osgood's house. Yeah? Who saw me? Where are his witnesses? He says I killed Osgood. Who saw that? I demand an immediate discharge. Well, Mr. Grant. Your Honor, the evidence in this case is so extraordinary that it would be beyond belief if we didn't have to believe it. Here, bring that thing here. I'll wipe that smile from your face, Moffat. Your Honor, there was a witness present. Unseen, unknown. Unseen, unknown witness out of nowhere. All right, bring him in. Your Honor, in this humidor is a dictaphone. The lifting of the box lid sets it in motion. It picks up everything said. It was a trap laid by Judge Osgood for somebody or something. And that's what it caught. Well, that's a lie. Yeah, Moffat, listen to a dead man speak. Sit down, Moffat. Thanks, I'll stand if you don't mind. So you weren't there, eh? Well, I had forgotten about that. Yes, I was there, but... But uh, what? I have nothing to say. But you had at that time. Have a cigar? No, I don't want anything from you. Well, I suppose you're wondering why I sent for you. Yes. Now, Your Honor, I want you to listen to every word that comes. Bear in mind that these two men were alone, and that Moffat thinks that there was no one there to hear what he says. Moffat, how would you like to take immunity? You tell me what you know about the crooks in this town, and I'll call off my case against you. You haven't got any case against me, Osgood. You haven't got any evidence. You haven't got anything, and you know it. Now, Your Honor, it is obvious that Osgood, by some gesture, showed Moffat where the evidence was kept, because since then it has been stolen. And there, Your Honor, lies the motive for the murder. It's a lie. It's the truth. Now listen to your own voice. Well, you're talking like a windbag. I'm not afraid of you. This is your last chance to save yourself. You save yourself. I'm warning you. Drop this. You think I'm going to let you railroad me to make political capital for yourself? It'd be pretty sweet for you, wouldn't it, to use me as a stepping stone? I'd break your neck if you try to make a patsy out of me. Calm yourself, Moffat. And now, Your Honor, there's been the threat. There's been the defiance. Moffat, why did you say that? What do you say to this? Yeah, I got a mind to smash your head with this thing right now. Nobody'd know about it. We're all alone. What are you doing there? Take your hands off me. Stop! Stop it! Help! Lie! It's a lie! It's cooked up! It's cooked up! I tell you, I wasn't there! That's part of my voice, but the rest of it's not! It's, it's, it's a fake! It's a fake, I tell you! This is our case, Your Honor. This wax cylinder will show that there was with no interruption in the action of the needle. It is a perfectly continuous record. And I ask that this man be held without bail on the charge of murder. This is a frame-up. When did you say this murder happened? What time? What hour? If the prisoner pretends not to know, I see no reason for our not telling him. Judge Osgood was killed at 4 o'clock this morning. What time did you say? At 4 o'clock this morning. No, 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 no. It, it, could, it couldn't have been 4 o'clock. Are you sure of that? What proof have you got? The best evidence in the world. The dead body. And this. A wristwatch smashed by a blow and the hands pointing at 4 o'clock. That's all I want to know. The district attorney himself has proved my innocence. 
I can prove that I wasn't there. I can prove that it isn't my voice cast from that toy. I've got a complete alibi. This young man here... Why, this young man... Well, well, what do you mean? You mean that young man can establish an alibi for you? Well, yes. Well, yes, yes, of course he can. Will you come up here, young man, please? Can you tell us where Moffat was at 4 o'clock this morning? I don't know what he's talking about. Judge, all I know is I seen him wandering around in kind of a daze. I recognized him and I picked him up and put him in my cab and brought him here. Oh, it's not so! It's not so! Tell him where I've been since 12 o'clock last night. Tell him I was with you. Tell him I was in your house. Go on, tell him I was with you. You were not. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you're lying. You're lying. You can't do this to me. Nobody can treat a man like this. They treat women worse. Where's my wife? Margaret, where's my wife? She's in the workhouse. Now go on, tell the judge. Tell him about me. You're going to tell him about yourself. She's in the workhouse. What for? Who put her there? I did. Now go on, tell him. Tell him. And what had my wife done to make you send her out? Nothing. She's innocent. Now go on, tell him where I was. Yeah, go my on. My wife hadn't done nothing, and you sent her to the workhouse. Judge, they put a man in my wife's bedroom, the bedroom of an innocent woman with her baby asleep in the next room. That's true, ain't it? Yeah, that's true, but go on, tell him the rest. You bet I'll tell him the rest. They framed her and this dirty skunk sent her to the island for six months. Did you or didn't you? Answer me, did you or didn't you? Yes. And what did you do that for? What did you have to take a good woman for and do that? Well, I thought you knew things about me. I thought you knew where my bank, where my money was hidden. I had to get her out of the way. You, you can understand that, can't you? I, I had to get her out of the way. You got all that? Yes, sir. What am I going to do about my wife? I, how am I going to get her back? Nothing, my boy. I'll attend to that. No, 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 you can't go. You've got to stay. You've got to tell where I was. My life depends on it. Erskine, you've got to hold him here as a witness. He's got to tell the truth. Moffat, my closest friend was murdered because he tried to clean up crookedness in this city. He offered you immunity. All right, right, I'll tell anything I know. I'll give you all the information he tried to get out of me. If you'll only give me a break. Young man, hold up your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. What do you know of this man's whereabouts at 4 o'clock this morning? I had him at my place. He was locked up from about 12 o'clock on. He's a crook, a liar, and a grafter. But he didn't kill Judge Osgood. Hey, you see? You see? <laughs> Watch all trains and steamship lines. The whole gang is on the run. And I want a prisoner for every warrant. Excuses don't go. Just a minute, gentlemen. A little present here for you. The DA wants to see you. Well, what's the matter with you? I have a little warrant for your arrest, Miss Baker. I think some of the boys down at headquarters would like to say goodbye to you. What's the matter? Moving, Grogan? Well, yes, I was. Mr. Dyer, isn't Why, why, yeah. I've got a little present here for you. Hup, you. Hey, let's pull the children out. Hup, you. Oh, don't. Hi, Lose. That's right, you both lose. Come on, pick up your money. Just a minute, driver. As a matter of fact, I tip Morford off. Yes, and, he and Morford tipped us off. The DA wants to talk to all of you boys. Hello, darling. Hello, sweet. Did you have a good night, hon? Yes, well. <laughs> oh, Mike, look. Uh. Hello, darling. What's the matter? Oh, what's the matter? Here's your daddy. <laughs> Hello, you big bozo. How are you? Hmm? <laughs> Why, it is not. <laughs> 